Welcome everyone. We are now officially on our last session of the teaching side of Concha Si Cafe. As I previously mentioned, for those that, that joined in a little bit later, um, even though today is the last teaching session that, that we're going to be conducting, uh, we still have three more weeks of Concha Si Cafe. The next two weeks are going to be workshop sessions. So you'll have your chance to bring in your work. We'll do breakout rooms and you'll get a chance to get feedback before submitting your final writing to be published in the next issue of Concha Si Cafe. Um, three weeks from tonight, the very last session, that's going to be a uh, feedback session for us. So that'll be your opportunity to tell me and Abraham, um, you know, the experience that you had, maybe some ideas that you might have for us to improve your experience, um, and also a chance for you to give us uh, your title suggestions for the next issue, as well as um, your chance to come up with the next theme for issue number three. Um, and on that note, the next series of Concha Si Cafe workshops will begin uh, mid-April. So basically like a month from now, uh, we'll, be the, uh, we'll, we'll be starting the last session or the last series of the current volume, which is volume seven, the seventh year of Concha Si Cafe will be finally complete, which is a pretty, pretty cool milestone, I have to say. Um, if in case you haven't noticed, my background is a little bit different today because I'm actually in the mobile art lab. Um, and, you know, as a reminder to everyone, even those watching on YouTube later, uh, the mobile art lab is available for anyone that needs help accessing the class, um, whether that be, you know, having to catch up, you know, watching you the YouTube videos or anything like that. Um, it is a resource that is available to you. Uh, at least right now, while we're, you know, still sort of riding this last wave of COVID uh, closures and everything, you just email me in advance and we can schedule a time for us to meet either one-on-one -on -one, or if there's enough of you, you know, we can do a small group um, and we can meet in a park somewhere. Um, and it's not limited to just East LA. I can also cruise down to uh, pretty much anywhere else in the city. So um, just a reminder again, this is a resource that is available to you. And <laughs> Las Vegas, uh, maybe not quite that far right now, Abraham, but you know, we, we, we can, you know, set that up sometime. Um, este, so yeah, with that said, tonight's lesson is going to be led by Abraham himself. And I am now passing on the baton to him. Abraham, take it away whenever you're ready. So people, hopefully you guys can hear me. We had I had a little difficult um, before coming here. <laughs> so without further ado, I guess I'll. Do you want to share it, or Luis, or should I share it? Yeah, I'll, I'll share the screen. Okay. So today we have this quote. It's the imagination is unleashed by constraints. You break out of the box by stepping into shackles. And this quote comes from Johann Lerer, born 25th June 1981, uh, American author and blogger. And before we move on to the Spanish version, I wanted to let you know that Luis kind of pointed out that this guy has been in the basically some trouble because he has been doing a, some plagiarism, also. He has reused the stuff he has used for other company blogs into new blogs. And also, I think he uh, he faked uh, some quotes from uh, Bob Dylan in some other work. And just to give you that little heads up on him, and in Espanol, um, la imaginación se desata por las limitaciones. Te escapas de la caja poniéndote grilletes. Esta cita viene de Johan Herrer, nació el 25 de junio de 1985, autor y blogger eh, y norteamericano, ¿verdad? Y como le estaba diciendo en inglés, es que pues, este autor está bajo el ojo del huracán porque pues, eh, copió unas cuantas cosas que escribió y aparte rehusó partes de blogs que ya había usado en otras compañías en sus nuevos y aparte, eh, 
fingió citas de Bob Dylan que Bob Dylan nunca dijo. Pero teniendo eso en cuenta, pues vamos a dejarlo atrás porque la cita, pues básicamente está buena. So, what is uh, your thoughts on uh, this uh, quote? ¿Cuáles son sus ideas sobre esta cita? Well, yeah, like Abraham said, you know, I did find out later, you know, after the handout was completed, that, uh, you know, he did plagiarize, which is, you know, the act of stealing someone else's work and trying to pass it off as your own. But um, I do generally agree, you know, that sometimes by limiting yourself, by putting yourself inside of a box, you can definitely find yourself to be more creative than you might otherwise be. Oh, I guess the river is kind of quiet. Well, I guess I'll relate one of my uh, uh, stories because I remember uh, one time we have a project and usually teachers or classes have this thing that they basically tell you, do whatever you want or express yourself or whatever. And I was finding it difficult because I never had that experience like before. Like everybody was, was trying to give you like a an assignment where they had rules and stuff like that. But when once they tell you, do whatever you want, it was a little overwhelming because my mind was going everywhere. And I think sometimes we need a little bit of focus in order for us to, uh, to find a better path or experiment some other things. And Annie was um, raising her hand. Um, when I read this, the first thing that came to my mind is, um, I was, I was thinking about what I said at the, the last session, um, listening to Heidi's poem about how, you know, in societies where, uh, people don't have the freedom of speech, where they can't say what they really mean to say, that, that constraint of their of their freedom to say what they want to say actually unleashes a whole creative um, spurt that comes through symbolism um, to to express what they have to say in a way that is conforms to what is allowed, you know. And so, at the on the one side, they're 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 following the rules. On the other hand, they're actually more creative and more expressive, but just underground, you know, a little bit. Um, so that, that's what that made me think of. Okay, Sunny. Um, we have uh, Rocio Diaz. Hi, hello. Um, buenas noches. Um, okay, yeah. So I was actually reading about this yesterday when I was reading one of my books about being creative. And um, it was mentioning this, that um, it was just, I'm not sure if it was bashing like the systems of like education and that we really don't need them as creative individuals. And that we are, we tend to be more creative when by ourselves, right? When we are consistent and we're disciplined about our art Um, that the best art comes out of that. Um, and I think it also mentioned that some of the best writers, some of like the top, top novelists, um, are, don't go to, you know, don't have degrees and are pretty successful in um, writing very successful books. Um, so it, this whole thing, um, conversation, it just reminded me of that. So. Um, it's very interesting um, to just hear, you know. Can I ask a question? Oh, yeah, go, Lois. Okay, um, the paragraph uh, you read in Spanish, but you didn't read in English? Yeah, we did. Uh, maybe you came a little late? Or... No, it, uh, well, I'm down here to the point where it says, comforting words soothe those alone. Did you read that one? No, we, we just started yeah, with the poem yeah. at the beginning. We haven't started oh, the poem okay. on the bottom. Yeah. All right. Well, you're, uh, the imagination is unleashed by constraints. That's what that one you're talking about? Yes, that's the one we're discussing Okay, right now. and you break out of the box by stepping into shackles. And sometimes, and that reminds me of when um, you don't allow, they used to call them preacher's children or the worst children. 
You ever heard that expression? Because the, the preacher's right. child is always constrained. You can't do this. You got to, you know, uh, walk. You know, I mean, you know what I'm <laughs> what I'm trying to say. They restrain the children from being normal. And this gives them a, an outbursting um, attitude on, 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 on life itself. And so it makes them do things that they wouldn't normally do because they are under restraints. So more or less, it, to me, it's almost the same thing, but it says the imagination is unleashed. And so that's true too, because uh, when you're uh, restrained and can't do something, uh, like in, I was reading a poem today, uh, I mean, it was, it was something else that wasn't really me, but it was me because of the way I feel, uh, because I'm 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 very, rom I'm a romantic, and I still like holding hands. I still like walking in the beach. I like walking in the park, you know, uh, and things like that. And so, because I'm restrained from doing those things, my imagination allows me to put it on paper. So, uh, whether it's paper or real life, your imagination. Uh, can be pushed forward when you're held back, when you're restrained, mm -hmm. when you're leached up. I don't know. Definitely. That's, that's Definitely, yeah. And I think it's, it goes hand in hand with, like, we'll find a way, right? And we have yeah. uh, Jenny, you want to say something? I think it's, I think it's pretty much like uh, what Ms. Lewis did, said, I'm sorry. The imagination is, is unleashed by constraints. You know, sometimes um, there are certain things that that I want to say, and because I I don't speak, I don't say them. I feel like I guess that's my. I guess I don't know. I guess it's it's also it's also fear, fear of uh, offending somebody. I guess. Sometimes, so I think that um, the, I have constraints, right? But at the same time, you know, I, there's so many things that I wish I could say. So if I say it, it says, you break out of the box by stepping into shackles. And I guess that if I say certain things, I could step into shackles, honestly. And um, I noticed, I noticed um, something that I wrote some time ago, it wasn't really, really welcome. I At least I didn't sense that it was because of what you say and how you say it. And nowadays, I don't know, I feel, I think actually, that there's so many things that I want to say, but I don't say them because of, you know, the fear of stepping into shackles, you know? I guess, I don't know, that's how I, I understood it. Um. I think the, the way I see the, uh, your predicament is that you sometimes feel like you 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 are constrained and you you can say those things, but I think this quote helps you to think like okay I'll probably find ways of saying those things without being so harsh or or offensive, which is kind of plays with back in the day where there was a lot of censorship in like the TV or anything else. People find ways of saying things that weren't as clear, just so they wouldn't be censored. So that goes like I think what you were saying. Like sometimes you cannot say it, but if you you use more of your imagination or and you start thinking of ways of saying them, you can get away with those things. I guess. I guess I don't know if I don't know if I'm gonna. I don't know. I, I just have to think about the things that I want to talk about. You know, because you don't you don't see people. You know, and I think that's that's what that's why I don't say certain things because. Of, you never know that you see that the majority write about this or write about that, but whatever I want to write about, uh, I really have to have the courage, I guess you say that, to to break out of the box. I think. Definitely. So that 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 quote is is definitely something that I uh, that I can um, apply to myself. You know, I mean, I I do have imagination, but sometimes you know you just have to be careful. Definitely. Yeah. Especially in these times. <laughs> Everything's being recorded, no, especially just, you post anything. 
so yeah, uh, you have to find. Ways I think to, that's called that's yeah. called um, persecution. <laughs> well, and that that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> no, it, yeah. Well, we'll leave it at that just for time's sake. Uh, yeah, we'll I, leave it at that. That's what. <laughs> yeah, my son's always when he wants to stop arguing with me, he goes, "Okay, let's leave it like let's leave it at that." No, uh, definitely. I like arguing just like time wise. No, but it's <laughs> but I'm telling you, you reminded me of my son. You know, when he's like arguing with me, he's like, okay, mom, let's leave it at that. I'm like, no, no, let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> but no, let's leave it at that. <laughs> Thank you. I, I have a, uh, um, a phrase to say and listen to it carefully. And I don't mean no harm or disrespect, but I, I need you to hear me. Okay. It's crazy. Beach nut chewing gum. Mother fusses at me all the time. Can you write it down? <laughs> That's a tricky one. <laughs> it is. That is. And so, like what she was saying, um, or you were saying, um, <clears throat> Abraham, the imagination can allow you to create um, replacement. You know. <laughs> Help me out. <laughs> Oh yeah, but, yeah, I definitely get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> we'll leave you guys uh, to imagine that one. <laughs> yeah, I think that's and, uh, that's definitely a good one to leave to the imagination. Uh, but uh, before before we do move on, I do want to acknowledge uh, Mojde's comment in the chat about how you know many great artists um, or works of art, such as paintings and poems and novels, as Mojde writes have been created during the darkest times of history. And I think that that's, you know, probably also a reflection of some of the limitations of that particular time period in history. So um, definitely is, it is, it is, I think, a good, good thing for us to consider, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, for the sake of time, maybe we should continue on, no? Yeah, uh, great conversations. Um, yeah. So I want uh, somebody to read the the next poem in English, and then we'll go in Spanish, please. Who's who's up for sacrifice? May I? I'll go for it. Okay. <clears throat> Confronting words soothe those alone in a world of pain and grief, reminding them someone cares. Each day they do their best to give of themselves inspiring others with their dedication, violently enduring their own woes to encourage others to overcome theirs, reminding people they matter, silently making a difference daily. Thank you. Uh, and these poems by uh, Leona J. Atkinson, poem written in honor of my granddaughter, uh, who is a dedicated caregiver. And somebody can read in Spanish, please. I can read it. Thank you very much. Okay. Las palabras de consuelo calman a aquellos solos en un mundo de dolor y pena, recordándoles que a alguien les importa. Cada día hacen todo lo posible para dar de sí mismo, inspirando a otros con, una, con su dedicación soportando valientemente sus propias aflicciones para animar a otros a superar los suyos, recordando a las personas que importan, silenciosamente marcando la diferencia diaria. Thank you very much. Uh, well, let's discuss the poem. What do you guys think about these two poems? ¿Qué piensan ustedes de este poema? We have uh, Janie. Wait. Uh, yeah, so it sounds like uh, it talks about people that give up their time and give up themselves while uh, they give up themselves without thinking of without thinking of their own uh, tribulations and you know just giving up themselves without thinking about themselves. I, I don't know if or, or how to say yeah, it? definitely. Unselfishly, think right, giving of themselves. That is that's yes. what it sounds like, and um, and you know, 
I, I guess I could identify with this because, you know, I because I'm a teacher, I'm a fifth grade teacher, and uh, I need to always, every single day, you know, tell the kids, hello, how are you? Even though my day could be like, oh, you know, even though like I wake up so, you know, because depending on how I sleep, you know, I'm on oxygen, right? So it depend, I don't always wake up like in a great mood, but because I have to, I do, you know, I, I tell my kids, hi guys, it's a beautiful day. Let's be part of it. Da, 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 da. I'm always doing that for my students, right? So I, I kind of identify with that. You know, I always try to find positive words and words of encouragement because I myself, I myself need those. And if I don't, if I don't adopt that attitude, it's going to be a long, long day for me. So I don't know. I just identify with it. I think you're right. I think the reason I, this one, uh, brought my attention is because we have talked about like caregivers and the things they do but i think this one expresses that they give something other than just a job they have to put some of themselves like in order for caring somebody else you have to have that kind of energy and give up some of yourself in order for this to be a, a beneficial thing for the person you're taking care of either it's a child that you're teaching to or somebody who's in a hospital or so on well, I guess uh, just uh, for the sake of time, because we have more poems to work through. Um, uh, well, does anybody who wants to talk about this one before we move on? Okay. So I have to first say, that, uh, tengo que clarificar un poco que este poema es un acróstico y voy a explicarles que no sirve tanto cuando, trans, uh, cuando lo transfieres al español. Por eso el primero sí quería ponerlo en, en de inglés a español para que tuviéramos este una idea del concepto del poema. Pero básicamente un, este es un acróstico y si lo leen en inglés lo que va a hacer es que cada palabra del, de cada línea la primera palabra si la lees de arriba hacia abajo va a decir una palabra y esto es lo que es un acróstico. Un poema acróstico es un poema en el que Primera letra de cada línea te letrea una palabra, nombre o frase cuando se lee verticalmente, como una forma de escritura restringida. ¿Y qué es una escritura restringida? Pues básicamente es una técnica literaria en el que el escritor está sujeto a alguna condición que prohíbe ciertas cosas o impone un patrón. Un acróstico se puede usar como recurso mnemónico para ayudar con la recuperación de memoria. Y ya hemos hablado de, de uh, recursos mnemónicos, o eso no lo vamos a explicar de hoy. Y ahorita hablamos de más de esto, nada más que lo voy a decir en inglés, ¿ok? So, as I was just telling in Spanish, uh, that that's a, a little bit of a tricky thing when you were talking about acrostics that uh, doesn't translate to to well in Spanish just because of the fact that what an acrostic is. And I'm going to tell you what an acrostic is, okay? An acrostic poem is a poem in which the first letter of each line spells out a word, name, or phrase when read vertically as a form of constrained writing, a literary technique in which the writer is bound by some condition that forbids certain things or imposes a pattern. An acrostic can be used as a mnemonic device to aid memory retrieving. And I'm not going to go into mnemonic device because we have already done that. So as I explained this, like before we have into questions, what will be the acrostic phrase for this poem? If no, you can ask me what it's uh, like, what is it? Just this is like a quick test. <laughs> it's caregiver. 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 Thank you, Michelle. Yes, that's caregiver. the right answer. Yeah, as we were discussing that, and in, uh, the acrostic is basically the first letter is going to be used throughout vertically going down and it's going to tell you a name or phrase or something, right? In this case, like uh, Michelle was telling us, like it basically reads caregiver, caregivers, sorry. And I was just telling them that in Spanish it doesn't translate just because it's different uh, starting of phrases or words. Does anybody have any questions so far? Okay. So we're gonna move on to the next one. So we're gonna give you a style different, uh, because acrostics have different styles. The one characteristic per line style. 
This style is quite easy to write. Simply choose a characteristic of the subject to be lyrical about each line. So can somebody read it in, in English, please? Is the one below? Uh, Luis, can you? Yeah, thank you. Come on, people. No volunteers? I'll do it. There we go. Thank go you, Michelle. You're welcome. Ariel. Or Ariel. A is for agreeable, a breeze to get along with, R is for refreshing, stimulating company, I is for incredible, you raise the bar for greatness, A is for alluring, draw, join people in, L for have an easy laughter. Thank you very much. Y lo voy a decir en español. Este, este es un estilo acróstico, ¿verdad? Se llama una característica por línea. Este estilo es bastante fácil de escribir. Simplemente elige una característica del tema para hablar de tal en forma lírica en cada línea. Hey, por favor, ¿alguien lo puede leer en español? Este Luis, que ya yeah, tengo. Volunteers, come on. We're like, how, how many people we are? <laughs> 12? If nobody reads, I can read it again. Thank you. If nobody reads. Nobody. Okay, I mean, nobody I'll is. go. If not, I, I'll accept if anybody reads, but since nobody's volunteering. Go, go ahead, okay. Juan Juanita, uh, just for the sake yeah, of Leo? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I guess. Yeah. No? <laughs> A es por, <clears throat> A es por agradable. Tu compañía siempre es amena. M es por madurez, que solo el tiempo te ha dado. O es por ojos, estrellas azules que lo ven todo. R es por rima, el sonido de tu corazón con el mío. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And again, as I was telling you, like the reason this one is not the same poem in English is because this one's actually made for Spanish, uh, for, because it's going to start differently if it's in Spanish. So as you can see, the first one says Ariel, and the second in Spanish says Amor, which is love. And so do you guys have any questions on this style? So you're going to be quizzed at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, just to summarize it, it's basically you're going to go through each letter and give it a characteristic, and it's really plain, like four words. So you can see what they're talking about, right? And now we're going to move on to the next style, which is the free form style. And this structure gives you much more freedom to tell, to let your creativity flourish. Whether or not the lines in the poem should rhyme is optional. Below is an acrostic poem about a subject named Elizabeth by Edgar Allan Poe. So por favor, uh, please, can somebody read in uh, English? This one's more tricky, so. <laughs> I'll read it. Thank you very much, Nikolai. Uh, an acrostic, Edgar Allan Poe. Elizabeth, it is in vain you say, love not, thou sayest it in so sweet a way. In vain those words for thee, or L-E-L. -E uh, Zantip's talents had enforced so well. Ah, if that language from thy heart arise, breath it less gently forth and veil thine eyes. And Dimion recollect when Lara tried to cure his love, was cursed of all beside his folly, pride, and passion, for he died. <laughs> Thank you. Great job, Nicolai. That was a, a hard one. <laughs> en, en español, este, este es un nuevo estilo. Este se llama el, el estilo forma libre. Es una estructura o, o que ofrece mucha más libertad para que, le, que la creatividad florezca. Si las líneas de poema deben rimar o no, es opcional. Abajo se presenta un ejemplo original. Este poema, por favor, lo puede leer alguien eh, español. Besides Don Juanita, if not, I think you could, you don't have many Spanish speakers, I guess. I guess just to have a different voice, Luis, do you want to read this one? I know I'm putting yeah. you on the spot, but... No, it's fine. I'll read it. Thank you very much. It passed. Yeah. Palabra. Paso a paso te digo, a 
alzo la voz para que me oigas. La idea que habita en mi mente hoy. Abre sus puertas mi entendimiento. Busco con ímpetu las ideas para decirte. Pero déjame expresar que rara vez me volverás a oír decir lo que mi corazón calla. Por eso, al menos escucha una vez, pues no se volverá a repetir. Excellent, the right person for this one. <laughs> Good job. Um, Thank you. So, do you guys have any questions on the freestyle one? Freestyle acoustic. This one's more straightforward again, and basically you just have to think about the first letters of each line in order for you to form whatever phrase or name you want to have. Okay? One little note, so, one little thing that I do mm -hmm. want to uh, bring mm -hmm. to everyone's attention before we move on is just look at how badass Edgar Allan Poe is. Not only did he do an acrostic where, you know, just like your traditional acrostic, the first word of every line does spell out a name, but also in addition to doing that and being constrained to that, he also manages to rhyme couplets. You know, every line rhymes with the previous line um, in, in pretty much throughout the whole thing, right? So, uh, say, way, L -E -L, well, arise, eyes, tried, beside, and died. That's awesome. That's pretty awesome. So, that's yeah, that is. You know. <laughs> and I guess, this is the cool thing about freestyle. You can do Mm -hmm. Basically, whatever you want in it. And uh, Edgar Allan Poe just decided yeah. to show up. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, just to be clear, it's not like, you know, required for it to be an acrostic. You know, that's optional. Yes. But good, and so we're going to move on to the next style, which is the double acrostic style. In this style, there is more than one grouping of letters that form the name of the subject in which the example below, the initials and the last letter of each line both spell out the name Stroud. So can somebody read this one, please? Any takers? Come on, people, don't be shy. It's not like we're being recorded. I'll read, I'll read, I'll read. I'll read. <laughs> Thank you, uh, whoever was saying that. Is it Annie? Yes. <laughs> oh, you're the best. <laughs> Set among hills in the midst of five valleys, this peaceful little market town we inhabit refuses vociferously to be a conformer. Once home of the cloth it gave its name to, uphill and down again its streets lead you. Despite its faults, it leaves us all charmed. How cute. Excellent, Danny. <laughs> like it's nice. I didn't realize it was about a, it was about a town. Nice. Oh, so in español, um, este es el nuevo estilo, el último que les vamos a dar de hoy. Se llama el estilo doble acróstico. En este estilo hay más de una agrupación de letras que forman el nombre del sujeto. En el siguiente ejemplo, la inicial y la última letra de cada línea se letrean Alejandro, un amigo. Por favor, ¿alguien lo puede leer en español? El español, tío. I'll go ahead and do it for the sake of time. Thank you, Luis. <laughs> Atesoro lo que el tiempo me da, llevando nostalgias a granel, esmerado en mantener la fe, justificando las horas del reloj, alentando mi alma por donde va, navegando con tal determinación, Demostrando la ausencia de maldad, remanso de fructífero y puro amor, ondeando la bandera que hice yo. Universo mental igual que tú, nostálgico, lleno de emoción. Alguien que siempre está morando como foto en álbum, inmerso siempre así, glaciar de ideas que deja su iceberg, oteados por algunos y por otros no. Excellent. So that one was like a good one. I really like that one. It's a long one, and yeah. I want to have those kind of friends. 
Um, so before we move on, uh, does anybody have any question on this one? This one's uh, definitely the, uh, the trickiest of them all, I think. Okay, no questions, I guess. So since everybody's an expert now, we're gonna move on to the class exercise. So as a class, we're gonna do an acrostic using the STL arts. So again, like previously, like for the people who are at home, they haven't been to these classes, we're gonna give everybody a chance to do a line and we're gonna write it down. So please nobody else other than Luis write on the chat right now. So we're gonna have a clean sheet basically on the chat and we're gonna start. Uh, I'm gonna start with first with the, uh, cause I know Luz, since she sent me one, I'm gonna start <laughs> with the first line, uh, hold on a second. Uh, what is that? So, okay, the first line is defining my identity I discover. And this is from Luz. She texted me and she said, I got this. <laughs> okay, can you repeat that? It says, defining my identity I discover. Uh, hold on, identity I discover. There you go, Luis. Thank you. Defining my identity, I discover. So that's the first one. Can I do the next one? Sweet. Go for it, Annie. Safe in a supportive space. Awesome. Oh, we're doing it that way. Okay. <laughs> so the next one is starts with a T. Just to remind you guys, uh, Nikolai says he's up for the next. Sorry, we yeah, cannot hear yeah. you. Tuesday like, nights online. Can you repeat that one, Nikolai? Sorry. Tuesday nights online. Sweet. I like that one. <laughs> so just to give you a heads up, the next one is L. My memory is short and I can't follow it. Yeah, the next one is an L. Yeah, the line should so begin far, uh, with a word that begins with the letter L. Yes. We have uh, Felicium. Felicia, you're up. Alicia, can you hear me? Because I mute. think you raised your hand. Do you have it? Maybe you're on mute. Unmute yourself. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. And I forgot now. Okay, wait. It's, it's all right. Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> um, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Language of the love of literature we all share. Awesome. I love that you guys are keeping with the subject. It's, that's pretty much. Sweet. Um, the next one is going to be A. And again, guys, don't, uh, well, don't write on the chat. Just say, uh, yeah. The next one is an A, just to remind you guys. It starts with an A. A and uh, apple. Karen, Karen. Arrive on time or you'll be locked out. Oh, somebody got stone right at them. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> uh, the next letter is going to be R. R. Felicia. I think it was Tina, actually. Oh, Tina? Yeah, Sorry, Tina. I cannot see all of you guys here. Well, let's go for Tina, since Felicia already had one. Reality versus art. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Twilight Zone. Right there. Um, the next one, we have T. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we actually had uh, Miss Michelle raise her hand as well. Okay, Michelle, you have the tea or coffee? Yeah, because I think she had the previous ones. I think she's ready. Okay, I'll do it. Uh, Miss Miss Lois, go, go for it. Time waits for no one. Let's get started. <laughs> Another one going after those people. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we have yes. S. S. Mm -hmm. All right, Miss Michelle. Michelle, okay, you're on mute. Do you have it? Yeah. Suddenly, sounds of words make a difference. Suddenly, sounds of words are soothing and succulent. It just works. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have it, Louise? Looks like I didn't hear that one. Oh. Uh, Do you want to repeat it? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to spell succulent. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Succulent. <laughs> there we go. Right. I think I think I got it. Thank you. Okay, excellent. Seems like we have them all. Okay. So we're just gonna give you a little bit to absorb it. And I think uh, what I want to do is do it all like each of you is going to read your own line. So be mindful where you are and we're going to read them like one by one. So just the first person who read the, the first one, then you recognize your own line. Okay. So Luis, you want to count down for this one? Yeah. Give me a quick second to rewrite it so that it's not all. So there's the first part. Okay. Let's do it. Who did the first bar? Go for it. Oh, that's loose. Uh, so I guess, uh, oh, which one was it? Okay, I'll, I'll read uh, loose. So she's not here. Um, defining my identity, I discover. Who's next? <laughs> Somebody missed their cue. Also, is each person supposed to, I'm sorry, I'm not understanding what's going on. Yeah, well, basically, we're going to try to do it all of us as one. We're gonna read it like each one's gonna read their own line. I just read loose because she's not here. That's okay, why. Okay, so next is me. I'm so sorry. Okay, let's let's start, let's again. start again. Let's start again. Yeah, yeah, let's start again fresh. Everybody get it, right? We're on. Yeah, we, okay, let's do this. <laughs> one, two, three. Defining my identity, I discover. Safe in a supportive space. Tuesday nights online. Language of the love of literature we all share. Arrive on time or you'll be locked out. <laughs> Reality versus art. Time waits for no one. Let's get started. Suddenly sounds of words are soothing and succulent. At Distill Arts. Mm. <laughs> oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. I mean, thank you. Yeah, no problem. No problem. <laughs> I got you too, Miss Lois. Don't worry. Yeah, and then Pro. Oh, oh, yeah, Andrew. Because <laughs> probably it's a little bit of my fault too, because I think some people don't have the text because they're on their phone. So, yeah. I just, I'll take some of the blame. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, uh, hopefully we have uh, learned a lot on this one and have fun. Um, and so because I know you guys this is the favorite part of the class, I'm going to give you homework. Liz, can you put it up? Mm -hmm. So go. this is your homework, right? An acrostic with the theme of caregivers in mind. And if you want to challenge yourself, make it a double acrostic. So that's an extra credit, let's say that. <laughs> en español, eh, la tarea, este, escriban un acróstico con el tema de los cuidadores en mente. Y si quieren desafiarse, hazlo un doble acróstico. Como decía, esto es para extra créditos. 
So anybody has any question on the homework or questions? Uh, just one. So when you okay. say use uh, the theme caregiver, giver, is that like the one that was there before, but we use our own words? No, um, just the theme, but you can use any word as an acrostic that you consider caregiver or the subject you want to talk about. And the first instance, the, 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 the writer was talking about her granddaughter as a caregiver, so she basically put caregiver. But if you feel like you are the caregiver or somebody you know or love or somebody or some other phrase you want to put on, go for it. Just consider okay. it has to be about caregivers. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it could be like a um, characteristic of a caregiver? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. And since we do oh, have... Felicia, sorry. Sorry, Luis. No, that's okay. Felicia? Yes. You have any question? Because your hand's raised. Oh, it is? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, it's gone. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, Luis, sorry. <laughs> no, well, now we actually do have a, a person that raised their hand. Heidi, do you have a question or a comment? Oh, yeah, yeah. My question about uh, before your sentence is homework in the chat. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, yeah, before you share about the homework, uh, do you uh, tap in the chat, homework? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just put it in the chat right now. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. So, oh, excellent. Yeah, the homework, it's in the chat. It's also on the handout. But yeah, again, you know, this, this week, your assignment is to write an acrostic with the theme of caregivers in mind. And if you want to challenge yourself, make it a double acrostic. And that's the type where you use the same uh, word vertically to be spelled out on both the beginning and the end of each poem, or of each side of the poem, I should say. Hopefully that makes sense. That, that's for prose. <laughs> yeah. Or you could even pull an Edgar Allan Poe and try to rhyme Ooh, it. Ooh, that's yeah. extra, extra challenge. Yeah. But what I was going to say is, you know, since we do have a little bit of extra time still, um, if it helps, maybe, you know, you could in the chat um, list characteristics that you think work with the term caregiver. Um, so that way you can kind of, you know, inspire each other maybe with other words aside from caregiver, which has obviously already been used. It would be helpful. That would be really helpful. Yeah. Any uh, does anyone have any like, you know, synonyms or you know maybe characteristics of a caregiver? Yeah, compassion, compassion. That's mine. Yeah, compassion. Okay. Compassion. <laughs> Somebody put the same one. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I put it in Spanish. I already, though. already wrote it. Good, good. We also yeah. have uh, from Miss Michelle. In addition to compassion, there's also empathy, patience. Uh -huh. Patience. Yeah. Strong. From Strong. Felicia. Um, support or supportive from Ani. Helper. Gentle. Ooh, gentle. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, loving. Kind. Gentle. Loving. Kind. Um, there's also, yeah, helper from Tina. Comfort from Ani. Tenacity from Miss Michelle. And then... Uh, Drug giver. Come on, Abraham. <laughs> again, have fun with it, guys. Like you can, uh, again, you have rules, but you can break them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Cleaner. Okay, cleaner. Oh, I have one here. Yielding. 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 Yielding themselves. You know, yielding. Yeah. Yeah. So, yielding. Yeah. Yielding. Um, yeah. Exhaustion also came from Felicia. Uh, giver, motivational. Um, Mojde did actually share a uh, an acrostic in the chat earlier, um, which I thought actually was great because it is in honor of uh, Women's Day, International Women's Day. So. Bring yes, it, it on. Yeah. Bring it on. Um, let's see, there's more words there. Giver. Motivational, tirelessly, sacrificial. Yeah. 
Um, Mojde, would you like to read for us the, the one that you put in the chat earlier? You read it, please. <laughs> Want me to read it? OK. Let me uh, scroll back to it. Shoot yourself in the foot. <laughs> <laughs> It's a pleasure. It's an honor to read for Mojde. I know. OK. So Mojde titled it March on March. March 8 is here and more relevant than ever. Outspoken and shouting for many overdue rights. Joining the remaining broken pieces of women forever. Dreaming no woman, no women day Dreaming no women's day ever again, but all the rights. Equality, reach out to women around the globe forever. Hands of many colors marching on march for all the rights. Great job, Mojde. Yeah, and it spells out Mojde's name. Thank you for reading. Yeah, thank you for sharing, Mojde. Awesome, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Extra credit. Extra credit from Mojda. <laughs> she gets an A too. Yep. Um, let's see. There's another word that was just added to the list of synonyms or characteristics of a caregiver. Uh, the word angel and the word nice. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, hopefully... This uh, quick little brainstorm gave you all some words that you can consider for your acrostic. Uh, obviously, you know, there's there's going to be, you know, different ways in which you can express it. There's the uh, the first one, right, that is um, the characteristic per line, right? So A is for, B is for, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then there's the freeform one, which... You know, again, you can always look at the Edgar Allan Poe uh, sample that was provided on the handout. That's a really good example. Or uh, Palabra, the Spanish one. Um, and then there's the double acrostic, which again is the first and the last letter of the line forming an acrostic vertically. So that's, that's definitely a Felicia. challenging one. But if you want to do it, give it a shot. And uh, Felicia, you raised your hand. Oh, my goodness. Okay, no. <laughs> I'm having problems. Is that an accident? Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Exactly. It's raising the roof. <laughs> All right. So does, uh, oh, Heidi, do you have a question? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, uh, you mean mm -hmm. uh, the homework work about uh, the usual caregivers? This is uh, uh, English word, but uh, I re, uh, I did star C A R E J I V E R S. Uh, writing this poem. This mean. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the word that you use doesn't have to be caregivers. It could be whatever word you feel describes a caregiver or caregivers as a whole. So. Oh, uh, you mean I can choose some word, uh, writing poem, but a star about uh, this is uh, uh, English word? Uh, well, I mean, if you want to use... Um, say a word in Chinese or or Mandarin, um, you're you're welcome to do that too. No 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 no. Actually, a uh, Chinese poem, judicial poem, have this is V two, but I'm a little confused about the subject. Which subject we need the writing? Um, so the theme is caregivers, right? So that's the theme. For the homework assignment, it could be whatever word you choose that is a characteristic of caregivers that you turn into an acrostic. Yes, and there's a couple examples on the chat of words that we just came out with, like tirelessly, oh, okay, okay. sacrificial, angel, nice, some words that you can put on. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. Does, does that help? Okay. And uh, the question yeah. in the chat, um, what does DSTL stand for? Um, DSTL in Distill Arts is an acronym, um, and it stands for the following. I just put it in the chat for you. Develop skills, transcend limits. DSTL. So, yeah. Little, quick little background on what Distill Arts is. I was wondering, mm -hmm. like, how would you have an acrostic in Japanese will be like, like top to the right to the left? Uh, yeah, probably. You know, from top to bottom, left to right, you know, it would probably read multiple ways. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how I would answer that question other than that, you know. Because um, I know they have the lines is like going down, basically like the acoustic, yeah. but they start yeah. from uh, right to left. Yeah. So I'm sure that's been standardized too, though. You know, for for other reasons. But um, but yeah, you know, there's a lot of different ways in which a person could have fun with the arrangement of words on the page. An acrostic is only you know one one particular way of doing it, but you could always do poems that kind of like you know, intersect with each other and the lines play off of each other in, in a very unique way. I've done a poem like that before where um, it's translated, partially translated. So like the the words on the right hand side are in Spanish and the words on the left hand side are in English. And when you read them together uh, as if they were written all together, it reads like one poem. And then you could read only the English and it reads like a, you know, one poem and you could read it all in Spanish and it reads like the same poem. So, yeah, there's a lot of different ways in which you can create limitations for yourself and still find really creative forms of expression, which I think is kind of, you know, the point of this exercise. You know, yes. Try to try to limit yourself, you know, put some some restrictions, some boundaries and see where you go. You know, there's there can be a lot of creative freedom within that sort of limitation that you're imposing on yourself. And the thing that I like about these ones, like Sistina, so all the ones that we have talked about, is like it's a concept where you start with those rules and then you find ways of expressing within those like constraints, with them being in that box, but still you're managing to create something, mm -hmm. and that definitely takes you away, like takes you away from your regular self. And gives you possibilities, which I like. Yeah, yeah, I like uh, that. Ani is gonna try to do it diagonally. That'll be really interesting. Yeah, and exactly. Then, That's the point. Yeah, and you know, like just to that was a joke. <laughs> that was a joke. But that's possible, right? Like you could, you know, do the second word of the second line. You know, ties in with the the first word on the first line, and so on and so on. So I'm gonna write it like a crossword puzzle. Yeah, like <laughs> that would be that would be really interesting, you know. Um, and we'll count it as an acrostic if you really want to challenge yourself to do that. Um, and to answer Heidi's question in the chat, you know, one more time, uh, you can pick the word, but the word should be something related to a caregiver, or caregivers as as a whole. Um, so, I mean, if if the word star is you know a word that you associate with a caregiver then you can use the word star right but if it's like i don't know the word table you know the word table maybe doesn't really have a lot to do with caregiving um therefore would not really make that much sense to use i think like for example if you use the, the name lupe and nobody's like that doesn't have nothing to do with caregiver well the point's gonna basically say why lupe is a caregiver if right. you want to use it that way. It can be either the word you're trying to do acrostically or the subject that's going to provide, like, the poem. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does... Thank you very much. Okay. Actually, i only been here four years. English is my second language. I'm very difficult to understand sometimes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, yes, I mean... welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, likewise. Like, you know, I... I... 
I, English is is my second language too. But I, I mean, I understood what your question was. I just hope that, you know, us explaining it, you know, a little bit more clearer each time helps. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But uh, your uh, culture and your language is similar to English. Yeah. Maybe Spanish similar. English uh, only speak di uh, different, but uh, if a pronunciation, yeah, it's uh, a seminal 15 percent. So, but uh, you know, my language and my culture, 100 yeah. percent different. So <laughs> for me, it's a yeah. very struggle. But uh, I think uh, for uh, for writing poem, it's good. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes if you have different feeling, it's very stronger, uh, different to us. Uh, you have your uh, special, yeah, special poem mm -hmm. and your feeling. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, it, I mean, it'll definitely be, a, I think, a good exercise. And um, and I'm looking forward to reading, reading your work, Heidi. So. Thank you a lot. Yeah, you're always inspiring. Yeah. <laughs> Great. All right. So um, if anyone has any last questions or comments, feel free to to let us know. Um, Otherwise, I think that'll that'll be it for tonight, right, Abraham? Any last things that you wanted to say? Nope. We should be experts by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you know, um, the most important thing is have fun. You know, this is a nice, easy, relatively easy uh, assignment for the last one. Um, like I said, next week is going to be a workshopping session. So next week we will be breaking out into breakout rooms and, you know, you'll get a chance to share the work that you've done up to this point with your uh, fellow classmates. Um, and then the following week after that will be a second chance to do that one more time before you turn in your work. So two weeks from today uh, is basically going to be when your work is due. So just remember to begin preparing now. Um, and then lastly, three weeks from today is going to be the last caregiving themed session. Um, it'll be a day for us to basically get your feedback, you know, for you to, you know, give us ideas on things that we can do better, ways in which we can improve the workshop. Um, and also it'll be a, a day well where we'll be collecting your suggestions for the next theme um, for issue number three which will be starting in the middle of April. Uh, the deadline will be, yeah, it's a, the 24th, but or the weekend after the, the 23rd, whatever that, that weekend is. Um, I think it's the 26th. Um, and then uh, to answer Tina's question, I, I don't know which, which picture you're talking about, but, um, but I'll check my emails. I've been very busy this last few days. Uh, writing grants, so, um, but I'll let you know. And Abraham, you raised your hand. Yeah, uh, I was uh, making some times during the weekend to uh, check some people's work, especially from the other workshop, because mm -hmm. that's the one I was, was able. And I was trying to do some for a uh, contest, but I think um, I probably might not be on their teachers, so I was going to ask you, can you double check? Ah, okay. Because I think maybe it's on the student or something. Just okay. to double check that out. Yeah, okay. I'll double check and confirm that. Thank you. Yeah, cool. All right. Well, that'll be it for tonight, everyone. Oh, question, Heidi? No, no, no. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. I will have to work uh, for this is the poem. Okay. Uh, okay. I will share next Tuesday. Thank you. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Take care. Good night. Have a nice week. You too. Good night. Bye -bye. And dinner time. <laughs>